but you got to grind it so that it works with this exacto knife handle and I like this one specifically because it's hexagonal and I can this is good I can put a lot of force anyway this is very sharp stainless I like stainless it doesn't really matter if the steel is stainless or not it I just like it because it doesn't stain okay so I'm going to do a veneer so the way you do a veneer is here's my bud it's going to the outside that's pretty good Let me make that straight there we go okay that's pretty good So now I'll see the difference. See that? So now that's a straight cut. So if you were to do this on the same side, that would have been a side wedge. Yep. Cleft graph. Yep. Yep. I don't do a lot of veneer graft. Right. It's all right. Oh, you can hear my neighbor. Listen. There you go. Perfect. That's pretty good. It's not perfect though. That's pretty good. That's a yeah. lot better than the one than the one I just did. That'll probably take. Red mulberry is resistant to nematodes. That's a good rootstock then. It's very cold tolerant. See, I never even knew that. And Wellington is like a red mulberry, white mulberry hybrid. Mm -hmm. So you could do some air layers on these red mulberries and use them as a rootstock, right? Yeah. These are just seedlings. They, The red mulberry grows out in the woods around here. They're, this is the only one that I've found in the woods here is hmm. this red mulberry. But I've been planting a bunch of white mulberry varieties. Mm -hmm. So I imagine they're gonna to start to kind of get weedy out here. Probably. But these woods have very few invasive species. I've found coral ardesia and- yeah, That um, was really invasive. Japanese privet. Mm -hmm. And then just lately, um, back there by the creek, there's that tropical trade escantia stuff, which mm -hmm. is actually kind of pretty, but um, Take that other inv place. invasive. Yeah, it's starting to carpet the ground. But other than that, those three, I have not. Oh, there's a few camphors because birds are always dropping the seeds. I found a few camphors popping up in the woods. There's not a lot of invasive species around here. It's mostly native plants. Probably should have wrapped this scion before, but I didn't think. What type of scion wood is this? The this is Wellington. 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 Makes a big Wellington fruit. is uh, similar to the Illinois ever, ever bearing. It's a red mulberry, white mulberry hybrid from a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But they say Wellington has a really good flavor. So I thought I would grow some Wellington. You got to be careful when you're going over these soft buds like this. I stretch it mm -hmm. and then I go very gently over the bud. And then I don't stretch it again until I can hold it back here. Okay. So that way I'm not putting any tension on my bud. And I go very gently over the bud because I don't want to break it off because this is a one bud graft. Mm -hmm. So very gently, very gently, and then we'll go over it again. And I'm trying to get it as close as possible, but I don't want to put any actual tension on that delicate bud itself. And now it's all sealed up. 
and then I'll seal this part of so that way water can't get in down down in between. Wrap that around. Maybe do that one more time. Oh, with a new piece of there we go. kind of stretch it. This parafilm is really only sticky when it stretches, and it's really only sticky to itself. It doesn't stick very well there. Mm -hmm. Anything else? But the parafilm will protect the rubber band. Let's look at that graft union. See? Pretty tight. See where you can see that veneer? Mm -hmm. It's touching. See how it's touching? Once the rubber band put it together. So this one, what I did here, my mistake here, uh, was I made a gougy cut. Oh, yeah, see. I needed to be straight. a straight. I, I did a like this. Don't do that. That was... Yeah, that was a mistake. All right, let's do another one. So I'm going to do a cleft graph for the next one. I don't think it matters what kind of graft I do. I like cleft. Let's see here. Let's do it on this one. It's a little thicker. So I like to rock the blade in like this, very gentle pressure, so I can control the depth of cut, because sometimes that wood will break. So just so you see it, when you do a cleft graph like that, The cambium is going to be two parallel lines. See how my finger is right in the the danger zone? Mm -hmm. So if if I was to push enough, it, that wood could split and go right into my finger. That's just not good. But by rocking it, you can control it? Because it cuts here, and then it cuts here, and it cuts here, and it cuts there. And there's never enough force for it to cut the whole thing at once. So you see, your cambium... It's two parallel lines, that right there between the bark and the wood. Mm -hmm. But when you cut your cleft, let me wrap it first. Let me, this time I'm going to wrap the scion before. Careful that knife. Yeah, I see it. So with parafilm, get the stretchy part and wrap it around. And then you kind of got to draw it and stretch it as you go around. You just need... To hold in the moisture a little bit mm -hmm. and then very again see I'm holding it mm -hmm. and I'm stretching because I'm not I don't want to put any tension on this bud so I stretch it and then go very gently over the bud and then I stretch it again and very gently over the bud because you don't want to break this bud off and then now I get above it, I kind of wrap it like this and pull it until I make cover it. That way it keeps the moisture in. Okay, that's how I do it. And when you're grafting, keep your wrist locked, move at your elbow and your shoulder. And I don't just push, I like to do kind of a slicing motion. See, that's pretty straight. Straight. Looks like now, it. A lot of people, yeah, it's straight, see? Yeah, it looks like it. See, that that's blade lays flat against it. Now, a lot of people do graph like this. They're like, see, they're turning. Right. I don't know, you're peeling potatoes, you're whittling. <laughs> this is what you get. Yeah. Not see, a good that cambium. cambium's not going to contact it. So the way you fix that, you cut it here, keep your wrist locked, cut it here, and then you catch it there. See, I didn't cut right here, I cut, so now I'm making the right kind of cut, but it needs to be longer. So having it longer, you'll have a better chance of the cambium 
yeah. contact. So that's pretty good. Get that pith out of there. But the problem with this is this shape is not two parallel lines. It's a kind of a drawn out U. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that cambium on one side in contact really well on one side. Like that. Mm -hmm. But it's not in contact on this other side. So that's like that apple we looked at earlier. So cleft graft is easy, but it's not such a good graft, in my opinion, because it doesn't have very good cambium contact. So I like a side <clears throat> wedge graft. Mm -hmm. I'll do that one next. Leave a little tab, can come around, catch it, come around. So the rubber band provides a little bit of tension. Mm -hmm to pinch the wood together, but you don't want it so tight that you're actually constricting its growth. You know, you don't want to bind it too tightly. I've so. got lucky sometimes they've came back, but sometimes they don't. So, not too tight. And then kind of catch it with my finger. Mm -hmm. See so yeah, how coming around, and I catch this with my finger and I hold it up, and I can put that little piece through. Perfect. See, okay. Now, you want to wrap it with parafilm. The parafilm protects the rubber band from the sun, and it keeps the moisture in, keeps the dirt out. But I think the parafilm, this nursery grafting tape parafilm, is semi-permeable, so it allows the gases to exchange a little bit, and I think that helps keep the plant healthy because plants breathe. Plants have to breathe. What do you think about when people use straight up plastic to wrap? Well, I think that's better than, than nothing. nothing, but I don't think it's as good as parafilm. It really isn't. But, but you I know, I guess you got to use what you have. Parafilm costs money, garbage bags are cheap. True. Um, now, with plastic, you got to go and unwrap it. With parafilm Just leave and it. rubber bands, you can leave it and see, it's, it's so brittle that as the plants grow and expand they just kind of break the parafilm off mm -hmm. so I don't have to do any more graft maintenance this is either going to take or it isn't I do have to make sure once the graft takes to cut off any competing foliage from the rootstock but I don't have to come back and do any maintenance to this whereas if you use um, other grafting materials you got to come back and cut this off otherwise it will constrict the union so this is very efficient I mean I don't have to come and do it anymore. Right. I got better stuff to do. That's true. All right, let's do. Let's do a side wedge this time. Let me show you why I like the side wedge. Actually, I haven't done a whole lot of mulberry grafting. I've done a little bit. I've done both of these grafts we've seen before. I did a lot of whip and tongue, mm -hmm. um, cleft, um, multi-grafting people's trees. But mostly with mulberries, I've done cuttings. But I've noticed that the, uh, like the Illinois Everbearing, it's a little bit difficult to root compared to the white and black mulberry species. These hybrid red mulberries, I've never tried to take a red mulberry cutting actually, but these hybrids like the Illinois Everbearing, it does not like to um, root from cutting. That's why it's best to just graft them? I think so. And then you're grafting them on a good root stock? So you cut, we'll do this one. Pretty similar down here. So you make a straight downward cut. You get into the wood, start rocking because your finger's still in the danger zone.
See him taking little shavings? Mm. So it's good to remove the powder stuff in the middle? I don't know, it gets in the way. See? It's flat. Yeah. Straight cut. Okay. That's not deep enough. See, it's got full cambium contact. Look at the other side. See? Oh yeah, it does. It it's the same. It's the same cut. With. It's the same shape cut. All right, let me tie it. So that's why I like side wedge. Yeah, it does a perfect. People don't like it aesthetically, because now it's coming off to the side. I don't care about that. It'll, it'll fix it so. Yeah, the tree will straighten out. So that's it, what I did to the avocado was a side wedge. The Bragdon see? it's pushing out. Yeah, I'm gonna come around. Oh no, I'm gonna come around. See, it's got perfect. Yep. It's a perfect cambium contact. I love that. And if it doesn't take, you can re graft it somewhere else. You still got your top one there. See, perfect cambium. So I really like a side wedge. I find side wedge. Be nice. To be easier mm -hmm. and more and better. But. Do you have better success with it? <clears throat> um, I guess maybe because I'm good at it and I like it, but yeah, it gets good cambium contact. I don't care if it comes out to the side a little bit because trees, when they're growing, if they got a little crook in the bark, mm -hmm. they'll grow more on this side and less on that side till the whole thing straighten up. It's a reaction to gravity. So this crook is temporary. It's just something that bothers one's sense of aesthetics. It's it really does fix itself. I, I did another yeah. avocado and it slowly curved its way back straight again. Well, what it does is it grows more wood on this side and less wood on that side. So, like the grains like this, mm -hmm. it, eventually it grows more here and less there and then the grains straight up and down. Hmm. They, they have a way of correcting that crook. That's amazing. And making themselves structurally sound in reaction to the forces of gravity that are upon them. That way they don't have any weak spots. Spots so, in the wood. So this 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 aesthetic thing about one coming out sideways that people don't like, mm -hmm. this this is not something to worry about. Yeah. What you should worry about is do you have the right root stock, do you have the right variety, do you have the right cultural practices? Mm -hmm. This is determines whether or not you're gonna get a fruit. But I guess if you're buying like tree art, maybe this is not a good graft. But I don't sell tree art. I sell fruit trees that are going to grow well. There's a little bit right here open. Thank Peace. you. You're welcome. It looks beautiful. In no time, in a, what, probably three weeks, we'll start pushing out. It might even be earlier than that. Yeah, it's going to start. So got a big bud. Unfortunately, the, the, we had some shipment problems. So the buds started growing. And these scions, I got these out of California. Um, fruit wood. I love fruit wood. Those guys are awesome. Buy scions from Fruitwood. Um, but anyway, uh, the shipment got held up during that freeze in Texas, and uh, it got hot, and it took about a month, and the cuttings started growing. Mm -hmm. All right, we got one more cutting. Oh, what did I do with it? Did I, lock, did I lose it? Got it. So we did a cleft. Uh, we did a veneer. No, you did a side we wedge. We did a side wedge. Whip and tongue? Yeah, let's do that. Do a whip and tongue. So this is a side wedge. Yep. This is cleft. Yep. This is veneer. Yep. I I can do a whip and tongue. I really don't like whip and tongue. It, it's like the one that takes me the hard, the longest to do. Um, I don't see any advantage to it other than it's 
like in line like the cleft so mm -hmm. aesthetically people like it but again this 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 aesthetic business i don't care about it yeah it's gonna work go for it here so there's also a graft called a splice graft a splice graft is where you do this kind of cut but there's no tongue So I always like to cut my tongue from the top down. So I come to the relatively to the top of the pith and cut a little tongue. There we go. Okay. And I'll cut it. I mean I can do a whip and a tongue. I just don't understand why people do whip and tongue. Mm -hmm. It doesn't confer any advantages that I can see. Ooh, that's an ugly, ugly cut. Yeah, I hate when you start running out. Let me try to straighten up and fly right. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. The only reason I think I do whip and tongue is because people tell me I'm supposed to. How did that... Um... I'm pretty sure that it's not necessary. Yeah. Oh. I don't think Mulberry likes whip and tongue. This is brittle, splitty wood. I'm just doing this to show, some, show somebody how to do it. I don't think it's a good idea. See, so I'm catching my tongue. There you go. Push it in. And see, we got good cambium contact. But because the scion is bigger than the root. You got to pick one we've side. Only got, yeah, good cambium contact on one side. See. I could graft it down here. Mm -hmm. But just in case this graft fails, I can use this side. As a backup. So it, if the graft is going to take, it's going to take on this one side. And this other side will catch up. If it's not going to take, it doesn't matter that the that it's only one side. Mm -hmm. So that's it's a perfectly good. acceptable whip and tongue as far as grafting success goes. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you do want your root and your scion to be the same size, but that's rarely a thing. You got to work, make it, make work it with work. what you got. Yeah, work with what you got. I've never tried to root Wellington. Maybe I should have done these as cuttings. Look, like you might have better luck just grafting it. Well, that's what I was thinking. I got a couple other varieties from them I've never had. I really like mulberries. Yeah, me too. I'm excited about that that other everbearing one I got from Luke. Is it cuttings too? or? Yeah, because it can grow from cuttings and it's supposed to have a big fruit. I like that. I really like the dwarf ever bearing, but the fruit's small. So if there's a, a, they call the Illinois ever bearing ever bearing, but really it has a long season. It's not ever bearing, mm -hmm. but if you cut it back, if you have a long growing season like we do, Come right back. you can cut it back and it's like, it acts like it's spring and it'll fruit again. But that's not really the same as ever bearing. These ever bearing mulberries. Just keep on going. Every time they grow new, a new little shoot, they set a new crop. That's a true ever bearing. Mm -hmm. That's a different thing. And That's really, the ones I want because you can just snack on the berries all the time. You know those those dwarf ever bearing? Mm -hmm. Nothing dwarf about them. But um, that's one of the first fruits in the spring and it's one of the last fruits in the fall. Right. That It has a, lar a long season here about, I guess right at the end of March, beginning of April. I'm eating the first small berries now in Tallahassee and then all the way till December whenever it starts freezing that's a long season it's perfect um, I can't get enough of them I good. could I'd eat Chick them every day chickens like them all right whip and tongue cleft side wedge veneer good job John Wellington what was her name Vivian Murray at Treehouse Nursery Pine Island Florida she taught me how to graph when I was 19 I went to Arcadia and Orlando looking for 
cold hardy avocados because my seedling uh, South Florida avocados were freezing and what I thought was cold hardy then would take about 25 hmm. um, it's a big 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 difference now I think cold hardy needs to take about 10 or 12 but um, she taught me how to graft and um, spent quite a bit of time teaching me how to graft and I didn't know that she had actually pioneered some grafting techniques for tropical fruits that nobody had known how to graft before. Um, Sound like a wonderful person. Yeah, she she taught me how to graft, and I've been practicing. And I really, really didn't start practicing a lot until I was about 25 or 26. But um, I will say thanks for you have taught me how to graft. Yeah, so I've been I've been what a year and a half now. Taught Luke how to graft. He's doing good too. And. Um, yeah, you gotta pass it along. Really yeah. do. It's a, it's a trick. You keep practicing and you get better at it. I, I talked to a, a fa I can't remember his name. I think it's I think his name was Gordon, but it's been a while. He's a, uh, his he and his dad have some nurseries down south. They do lots of different fruits and mostly citrus. And um, I was asking him about the the hanging bud technique for citrus and how long it took him to get really good at it and how he could do so many. He said he he can do thousands in a day well wow. and that after he did the first few hundred thousand he got really good at it and I, was like, oh, I don't think wow, that's a lot I don't think I'm gonna do that many graphs in my whole life I mean can you imagine doing that much I wow. can handle about two or three hundred a day mm -hmm. and then I get kind of wore out your hands are wore out I get tense and I have to get up and work work do something else do something. yeah I gotta move around it's all this. You have to think. You have to really pay attention, and yeah. a lot to go in. I'm not. I, I try to be patient, but I'm not patient enough to do more than a few hundred a day. But I think he might do thousands a day. Man, you gotta give it to him. Yeah. Thank you, John.